Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Paige here once again with another video, and this is going to be another Q&A video. So as I said in my last one, these new Q&As are going to be a tiny bit shorter, like maybe like or oh, half the questions, two thirds of the question, uh, questions I usually do just so I can bring out more of them. And uh, yeah, so be sure to leave any other questions for these Q&As that I don't obviously answer in this video in the comment section down below for the next one. And uh, yeah, and one last thing, a lot of people have been asking about the setup video because I did mention it like two weeks ago that I might do it. And then I said I would do it. Uh, I'll probably do it in like the next two to three videos or something like that. I'm just waiting for one more thing to come in the mail, which is a part of the setup. So I don't want to do it until it's officially complete in my eyes. So it'll be yeah soon. So just, uh, just be patient. But anyway, the first question comes from Weird Kathy, and she asks, do you think Caitlyn and Barry will end up together on The Flash? And honestly, no. And it's just because obviously that they've driven West Allen. It was always going to be West Allen, like Iris West and Barry Allen at the end. They'd basically established that. The one thing that has surprised me throughout The Flash's run is how fast they've pushed Iris and Barry together to the point at... Uh, in season three, they're engaged. So in season four, you th they're most likely going to get married. So I was very surprised they didn't do anything with Caitlin and Barry because they did do a lot of like uh, setup, I guess you could say, or um, alluding to it in season one. Uh, even though there was like that one episode where like I think they might have, I, I can't really remember too much, but I'm surprised that never happened. And then they've done with Caitlin stuff like what Ronnie in season one. Jay Garrick in uh, season two and then Julian Albert in season three. So uh, like Caitlin's sort of getting like the guest stars as her relationships on the show. So yeah, I don't think Caitlin and Barry will ever be together on the show or end up together at all, but I'm surprised they didn't do something with those two uh, beforehand and uh, like from what we've seen so far and before Iris and Barry end up together at the end. Question two comes from Da Boss Gaming, and he asks, uh, "Do you think that Batman or Blue Beetle could appear in any of the CW shows? It's a possibility. The more likely of those two would be Blue Beetle, because they have set up Court Industries. And funnily enough, I think if they did bring in uh, Blue Beetle, they actually wouldn't use Ted Core. They might use um, Hame or whatever. It's, oh, what is his name? Can't remember. Remind me in the comments. I'm just going off the top of my head." Uh, the second blue beetle, uh, second blue beetle, and they might use Ted Cord as like the guy who invents some sort of technology or something like that. And then the kid, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, gets affected by it just because it's CW. They like the younger heroes, I guess. And Ted Cord would probably be in like his fifties or maybe late forties or something if they put him on the show. So, uh, yeah, Blue Beetle most likely out of the two, even though it would be really cool to see Batman. Question three comes from Panax07 or 07, one of the two, and they ask, uh, how will they explain Barry being gone to people who don't know he's the Flash? Now, this is the first time I've actually seen this pop up. So it's a very good question from Panax. And yeah, it's a very good question because it's going to be very difficult. And it, I reckon it could be a big plot hole. Um, hopefully they explain on the show because really Barry would have been gone for usually the break between the end of a season to the beginning of the next season in that like universe timeline is six months ish. No, not exactly six months, but around that area. So maybe five and a half to six and a half months. So they got, it's going to be very interesting, interesting to uh, see how they explain uh, where the, the CSI guy from Central City Police disappeared to because obviously it looks like Julian's off the show. So both of the CSI guys are gone. Uh, who was doing all the work. So that's going to be interesting to see how they, they explain that. Like, he can't, he can't just go on a holiday. He can't say he was in a coma because they need some evidence in, like, a hospital room that he's there. So, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what everyone thinks uh, they might do in regards to that in the comments. And question four comes from Nathaniel Orr, and he asks, uh, do you think when Barry gets out of the Speed Force, his speed will be reduced or remain the same? Now... In this uh, comment on my last Q&A video, people were responding, oh, he's probably going to be faster. Like, why would he be slower? I actually think he might remain the same speed, but he might have a greater grip on his powers. So he might not, he might uh, know how to, uh, you know, tap into the speed force more in a sense where it has different powers that aren't necessarily speed based. So it's nothing about making him faster. It's about him, it's about him using his speed to do other abilities. So I think that's what he might learn from the Speed Force because the whole thing with the Flash, a lot of people 
get it confused. The Flash actually never reaches his full potential unless you count Kingdom Come. Now that's an Elseworlds, uh, Elseworlds uh, story from my, uh, from memory. Um, but yeah, throughout the whole Flash thing, he's always getting faster. He actually never reaches his full potential in the comics. So that's what they're probably going to do on the show. He's um, slowly going to get faster, but he's got to learn other abilities at the same time. And from seasons one to three, it's really been about him getting faster. So it will be nice in season four, seeing that the Thinker, who's a non-speedster villain, uh, is the big bad for the season, that he uses his, his abilities in a different way that aren't necessarily all about how fast I can go. So season four, I think, is going to be that season where he learns more about his abilities that aren't just about, you know, running fast. Question five comes from True Talk. I think I've written that, yeah, True Talk, sorry. And uh, they ask, what are your favorite time periods that the Legends have gone to? Now, none in the future because I haven't lived in the future, but then again, I haven't lived in any of these periods that I'm going to say. But the 80s, I'm very fascinated by the 80s and like the 70s. I think that would have been a pretty cool period to live in. And also like the 50s-ish, you know, when like the... When they go back, when like that in season one, when it's the um, it's like the uh, like the hawk thing, you know, when the people turn into like these weird hawk creatures, like that period would have been cool to live in, uh, just because of like the how like all the surrounds, like the diners and stuff like that, just and like the clothes, it would have been a sort of cool period to live in. So yeah, those are my favorite ones that legends go to, like the fifties to like the eighties, anywhere around that, it's pretty cool. Question six comes from Scully, and he goes or they go. What's your opinion on Supergirl? Now, a lot of people ask me this because I actually haven't done any bonus videos for Supergirl apart from the two videos I did straight after, after the finale for season two. And I didn't even do a trailer breakdown for the Comic-Con trailer because they stuffed up and they took so long to release it online that I think they released it like five minutes before Legends did. And I was like, well, Supergirl, you've lost your thing, you have your chance, I'm doing Legends. And a lot of people, I think, did the same. They just skipped down Supergirl because they handled their distribution of their trailer and their Comic-Con content so poorly. Like, Comic-Con was a bit of a disaster for Supergirl as a whole because even though I didn't really care about the comments that they made, a lot of people got angry about them. I didn't think they were that bad, but people did get angry about them, so they handled themselves pretty poorly at Comic-Con. In regards to the show, Season 2 was better than... Su uh, season 2, sorry, was better than Season 1, but that's not really saying much because Season 1 was a bit all over the joint just because of the network it was, it was on. It still has issues, and I'm hoping in Season 3 they do manage to figure out some of those issues where they focus not necessarily necessarily on story too much, like, and they focus on the relationships, which is a big thing. They sort of stuffed up in Season 2. A lot of people are getting angry about that. Uh, they need to really focus on making Kara Supergirl, because even though she is Supergirl, she does get sort of bullied around by other characters, so hopefully they sort that out. And, um, yeah, but Season 3 actually looks promising. Uh, from what I've seen so far, I haven't looked in too much to it because as I said, I'm not making videos on it. So really, if I'm not making videos on something, I'm not actually really looking into it too much. Um, but yeah, like the show has potential. It's just that in some areas, it's very weak. In some areas, it's pretty strong as well. But yeah, season three hopefully is better than season two because season two was still very disappointing in my eyes. Um, and it was better than season one. But as I said, that's not saying much. Our second last question and question seven comes from Jack the Boss and he goes, do you think that we could see a King Shark v Grodd episode in season four of The Flash? Now, it's possible it'd be very expensive in regards to our CGI because an important thing to remember is in the second last episode of season three, I think it is, in Fantino Street when Captain Cold is brought back through time and stuff like that and he helps Barry against Argus. Grodd's in there, and obviously King Shark was in there as well. So Grodd had his own little containment unit, and then we obviously got to actually see King Shark in his, and he was protecting, like, the Dominator technology thing. So if they did something with Argus, and there was a breakout, and then we saw King Shark v Grodd, then that's possible. Gorilla Grodd is on Legends this season. I don't know in what capacity. I haven't really looked into it too much. Um, but yeah, so they'd have to figure out something there, I guess, and in like what way Legends are using Grodd, because obviously Legends have like the timeline stuffed up, so I don't know what they're doing there, and that could really determine what version of Grodd. That could be like a Grodd in that timeline, and then we still have our Grodd in the Flash timeline, so Grodd v King Shark could still be possible. As I said, could be a bit expensive, but it would be pretty cool to see. And the last question, uh, question eight, comes from Scientific, and they ask if you could be, uh, if you could be any character from the Arrowverse, 
Who would it be and why? Um, wow, got me up. I should have actually thought of this. I wrote it down a while ago. I should have actually thought of it. Uh, who would it be in the Arrowverse? You could say The Flash, but he has to deal with a lot. Like, honestly, he has to deal with quite a lot of crap. Honestly, Heatwave, to be completely honest, because all he does is drink beer and eat, and he gets to travel through time. So why not? He's got the, basically the easiest job going at the moment. So why don't we go with Mick Rory, Heatwave? I guess a lot of people weren't expecting me to say that, but uh, yeah, we'll go with Heatwave. But thanks for watching guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could leave a like on it just to show your support. As I said, leave any other comments, uh, any other questions you want in these Q&As in the comment section down below because, you know, we need them to fill the videos in with content. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later guys, goodbye.